Hey everyone, this is Dan Thompson. Welcome to another Wise Money Tools video and podcast. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about and take a look at the new proposed healthcare that Elizabeth Warren just came out of. But we're gonna to try to look at it from the perspective of, you know, a hardworking middle-class American, if you will, who's, you know, trying to get to a point where they can retire someday. Let's just think about the millions of people who have a 401k out there or really any other retirement plan that's getting funded because of work. So the question is how many 401ks could get creamed if Elizabeth Warrens were to get her policy put into place? Well, let's look at the plan and again at a very high level. Basically what she did is she announced her Medicare for all plan. It's a $52 trillion plan that has all the makings for a way to pretty much destroy, to destroy your 401k. And let me explain what I mean by that. It's critical that you connect the dots and understand the chain of events that can be set off by one sudden move. You've probably heard of the term the butterfly effect, right? Well, it's defined like this. It says, this is a phenomenon whereby a minute localized change in a complex system can have very large effects elsewhere. And then the analogy is if a butterfly flaps its wings in Chicago, a tornado occurs in Tokyo, right? So what Warren is proposing has such a devastating butterfly effect that it literally could affect the world because the United States tends to lead the world anyway. Well, let's look at the basics of the proposal. And again, just kind of at face value. What, we, what she said was it's gonna cost $52 trillion over 10 years. And she says it's gonna be paid for by taxing millionaires and billionaires and corporations. She says her plan won't increase taxes on the middle class. And she says that they will even get some money back. She wants to increase the power of the IRS to collect more taxes. She wants a 3% annual tax on wealth. She wants to increase payroll tax on businesses and corporations. Okay, so that's probably just the surface. Now, if we unpack those things one at a time, maybe we can kind of deduce the oncoming butterfly effect. First off, $52 trillion over 10 years. That's $5.2 trillion per year. Now, that's trillion with a T. Now, for a bit of perspective, Let's look at what a trillion dollars is in seconds, okay? So a thousand seconds is almost 17 minutes. It would take almost 12 days for a million seconds to elapse. It takes 31.7 years for a billion seconds to roll by. Now a billion is a lot of money, but a trillion dwarfs a billion. A trillion is a thousand billion which means a trillion seconds would amount to 31,709 years. Now, we don't even have enough history to go back 31,000 years. If we take 52 trillion and we divide it by the number of people in the United States, which is 372 million, not counting illegals, and by the way, illegals get their health care free, it turns out to be $139,784 per person over 10 years, or $13,900 per person every year. Now that's not every working person, that's not just uh, adults, that's every single person is paying $13,900 every year. So a family of five, um, somehow, some way is gonna get paid, six, or is gonna have to come up with $69,000 per year. Now, I guess the first question is, are you even paying $69,000 if you're a family of five right now for your health care? All right, but here's the deal. She says the middle class isn't gonna have to pay, just the rich, the wealthy, and corporations are gonna have to pay. Now, again, presuming this passes, let's see what might happen. So first off, no one in the middle class will have to pay the cost, which even her fellow Democrats say that's just not possible. That means somehow the wealthy are gonna get stuck with it. Now the middle class makes up for about 66% of our current population. So that means 34% of the population is gonna to have to fund 100% of the cost for her plan. 
Again, there's 372 million people. That means 66% of them or 245 million aren't gonna have to pay. So that means 97 million are gonna have to come up with, you ready? So we're gonna just divide that out over the 97 million. That means over the next 10 years, 97 million people are gonna have to pay $536,000 each, okay? The question is, are you one of the 97 million? See, the middle class income for this year was between 45,000 and 145,000. So a family making 145,000 gets to pick up a significant tax and pay for others' health care. The reality is, it's just not practical. You can steal all the money from the wealthy and it won't make a dent in this kind of a cost. So what's the butterfly effect? How many wealthy people will let their money be stolen from them or have a government takeover where they literally have unlimited taxing power on them? What if she's wrong though? What if it's not just 52 trillion? What if it's 60 trillion or 80 trillion? One thing we know about the government is they always seem to be able to spend more than they estimate. We also know that what the government takes, they rarely ever reverse and give back to you. So what we're gonna see is probably families with a lot of money and corporations exit the country. Similar to what's happening in New York. People are leaving New York and heading to Florida like mad because of the taxes that New York keeps imposing upon them. You can only tax so much before those with the money say, okay, that's it, I'm out of here. Now, you may have noticed in the last few years, we've had somewhat of a booming economy. It's the butterfly effect of tax cuts. When businesses and families have more money in their pockets that they can spend and save and invest, the economy grows. As they grow their wealth, they may buy a bigger home, get another car, take vacations, go out to eat, invest, whatever they want to do. The effect is tremendous on the economy and that's why we have a 50-year record low for unemployment. That's why wages have been going up dramatically compared to previous administrations. The wealth tends to perpetuate more wealth. More wealthy families, more millionaires are added to the rolls as there's really plenty of room for many, many more. There's more innovation that occurs. More businesses invest in R&D. More businesses are created to fill needs and wants of others. Raising taxes has the opposite negative effect and the economy tends to shrink and even possibly collapse under the weight of government regulation and taxes. The Medicare for all is nothing more than a recipe for disaster. There's no free lunch. It's got to be paid for by someone and somehow. Okay, I better stop there. This is just the cost and the butterfly effect it will have. Let's talk about just for a second the unintended consequences. I've said this previously, but corporations do not pay taxes. Okay, yeah, they write the check, but the tax bill is passed on to every consumer of their goods and services. It's factored into the price, just like any other cost of doing business. Since I've talked about this before, I'm gonna be quick on this point. If a corporation gets hit with a higher tax, several butterfly effects occur. Number one, increased cost to the consumers. And this could and would eventually price the consumer out of the market. Number two, wages to employees have to be reduced to keep your prices the same. And number three, eventually cutting back on employees, which makes unemployment rise. See, taxes can't be raised in a vacuum. There's going to be consequences. And in this case, they can be devastating ones. Now next, she says that the IRS will be tougher on collecting. Now, if this alone doesn't send shivers up and down your spine, I don't know what does. I mean, there is no piece of mail that you can get that when you open your mailbox, you see internal revenue service on the top of that envelope that puts you into a tailspin. If you've ever had to deal with the IRS, you know how unnerving that can be. So would you be in favor of increasing the force and the power of the IRS? Does this make you all warm and cozy? If so, watch out, you could be next. So then she wants to do a 3% annual tax on wealth. 
It's not robbery enough to steal from your paycheck, but can you imagine every year filling out a personal financial statement and then sending the IRS an additional 3% of your wealth? And this isn't a one-time event. It's every single year. Now that sounds like it's pretty motivating to want to build your wealth, right? All right, so <laughs> I wonder if this woman is actually functioning with some mathematicians behind her. Now, if you're a millennial or a Gen X or whatever, but you're going to get a job someday and try to support a family, maybe you have some ideas and you want to be financially free someday, you would be nuts to vote for this because in a few short years, you're going to be the one holding the bag. And I can tell you right now, if this were to go into place, the number of offshore accounts and foreign corporations that would be created would be massive. Other countries would be wise to make laws right now to allow U.S. citizens to open up corporations in their country with one simple, easy document. Banks couldn't open doors fast enough in other countries trying to keep all the wealth that's going to leave the United States. The Bahamas would be open 24-7 trying to keep up with the demand. The butterfly effect is that the very people that Warren put these taxes on eventually take their money and they leave the country. Now who's going to pay? Okay, so finally, she said that she wants to increase the payroll tax on employers. See, again, this is kind of ah, not even thinking. Once again, where's the money going to come from? What's the butterfly effect? Lost jobs as employers will have to cut down on wages. Unemployment's going to go up. Consumers will have to pay more for the goods and services. Now, here's the culmination of the entire butterfly effect. The very people who she thinks she's helping are the same people that are going to be hurt the most. Why? Because most likely their wages are going to be the first ones to go. You see, the poor tend to have the jobs that are more expendable. And she's trying to theoretically help them, but in the sense she's going to ultimately put more hurt and burden on them. They may have to share a job with someone else or, or go part-time. Worse, they may just actually lose their job. The devastation will trickle down to the lowest paid, the least educated, the poor to the middle class income earners. They're going to feel this the most and they're going to be the recipient possibly the harshest economic circumstances that they've ever been in. Look, folks, you don't need a spreadsheet, a degree in economics. You don't have to have a Harvard education to walk through this in your mind. It's just common sense, at least to everyone who's not brain dead and a politician seeking power and control over us. Just think about this for a second. Think about where you work. If you're an employee, and your employer just got hit with an additional 15 to 30 percent additional tax, what might happen in your line of work? What might happen to your job? Do you think the employer has the capacity to simply take it out of his pocket? Or will it eventually affect the entire company? If you're an employer and the same situation occurred, what would you have to do? Is your business so filthy rich that you'd simply roll over and eat the tax? Or would it have to be passed on through employees' reduction in wages or price increases? Most small to medium-sized businesses run pretty lean. The first to go are going to be the lowest paid and most expendable. So this thing has, a, has disaster written all over it. Just think about what this would do to our economy. I know it's nice to think about getting free stuff, but it just ain't ever going to happen. It can't happen. There is no free lunch. Someone pays and it will affect the poorest among us eventually. Everything from gas to groceries will be affected and you and I will pay for it somehow, some way. There's no such thing as stealing from the rich without a butterfly effect and in this case, a tsunami on the other end wiping out a wonderful economy. So that was kind of fun. That's it for this video probably got on my soapbox a little bit, but I want as many as within the sound of my voice to become a one percenter. I want you to be wealthy if you're not there already. I find it pretty exciting that there's a lot of people with means and wealth that tune in to our videos, and I love having you here, and I want to hear from you. There's 
plenty of room for more wealthy people in this country. I don't want you living paycheck to paycheck with debt hanging over your heads. Even though politicians want us to hate the wealthy right now, it's the wealthy that can make changes in the world, and I'd love to see you be one of them. Well, as always, if you have any questions, shoot them to questions at wisemoneytools.com. Please, I'd love to hear your comments, and don't forget to subscribe. If you ever want to have a strategy session, spend a few minutes with me and talk about your situation and how you can improve upon it, click on the time trade uh, link below. Other than that, glad to have you with me. Talk to you next week. Take care.